Triannuary Log, Day 2, Friday the 2nd of January 2015. So, here we are on Day 2 of uh, the 31 beers of January I'm doing for Triannuary. Um, and I've already screwed up because I didn't actually have a beer in the house from another British brewery that I haven't had before. No, different as beer I haven't had before. What I do have in the house is a uh, friend's home brew. So, ah, that's something different. Um, I mean, the home brewing industry is pretty cool anyway. Uh, it's another part of the whole British beer industry that we can support. There's a company um, I use for things called, uh, if you're whacking into uh, Google, the Malt Miller, you'll find it. I think it's called Neil's something. But, um, uh, and there's a whole plethora of other little homebrew shops out there, and if you're lucky, you've got a local one where you can go down and talk to people. Uh, alas, not here. Um, anyway, we've got a chap called Bob Arnett, um, recently drunk on Twitter. Lots of people follow him, so you probably know who I'm talking about. Um, had a few of his homebrews before. They're generally pretty good. He likes his hops, so they're generally pale and hoppy sorts of things. Uh, just the other day, he dropped one off to me, which I'll be careful with, because it is bottle conditioned, of course. It is binary star. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Chuck Citra. I think we can see where that's heading. Um, having a quick look at the label, apparently it's Guile 13, original gravity, 1044, 55 IBUs. Uh, we are definitely heading in the direction I expect. Uh, this was brewed on the 11th of December, uh, so less than a month ago. Very fresh. So, as far as drinking your hoppy beers fresh go, um, this could be a bit too fresh. If we're lucky, it's actually conditioned up enough. Okay. Let's see if I can do this up here this time. As usual with bottle conditioned beers. Wait for it, there it goes. Oh, well. I got a little bit of sediment in there. But not too much. I could have pulled that a bit higher for a bit more head. But it's got plenty of condition in it. Smells good. Smells like a poppy pale ale. There's the usual sorts of citrusy peel uh, aromas you get. Mm. That's interesting. It's very dry. Really has a uh, pine needle, um, resiny hint to it. And they're slightly dank. With lots of uh, fruity tones. I'm not gonna pick, pick uh, specific fruits, I'm not sure, it's almost Almost watermelon, melony. No, no, I won't do that. Um, but it's very pleasant. Um, I think I've had one from him before that was a little bit hoppier. Um, this is good though. I do a bit of homebrew myself. Haven't done it for a while. Now I don't really have the patience for it. No. But uh, I wish I did because it's good fun and uh, the results are sometimes really fantastic and uh, relatively good value for money at the end of the day. But, uh, Unfortunately, in my case, the results are about uh, 50 plus percent of the time not really that good and I've still got a few kicking around in the house that I don't want to really drink and I should probably just tip out.
but uh, that's life with homebrew. Um, anyway, if you're interested in what Bob gets up to with his homebrewing, which is a lot better than mine, that's for sure, uh, check out Recently Drunk on Twitter. And he's got a website which is just beer.bobarnett.com. Um, that's Arnett with two T's. And I'm sure he's probably got a uh, post on his blog about this beer already. Um, it doesn't actually say what the ABV is on the bottle, so uh, I might have to go check out his blog in a moment to find out how strong this is. It doesn't seem terribly strong, probably. 5 to 6 or something. It's very dry. And quaffable too. Anyway, we'll leave that at that this time. Um, cheerio until uh, tomorrow, where I must uh, make a trip to a local bottle shop to find myself some beer to try. Cheers.